And our, Wait, our Surface just died. Can Microsoft's new Surface Laptop 5 compete with the M2 MacBook Air? Well, we are gonna compare everything from performance, design, speakers, webcam, and much more. Both of these laptops are charged to 100%, so what I'm gonna do is unplug the MagSafe connector and Microsoft's Surface connector because we're also gonna look at battery life throughout this test. Here are the full specs of the laptops and as you guys can see, the price is identical. And I actually really like Microsoft Surface laptops, but one of the biggest issues was the fact that the ports only supported USB, but now they added Thunderbolt. So let's see how fast it is. This is a 92 gigabyte folder that I'm gonna transfer. It only has video files in it, so it's very easy for the computer. And now we're transferring at just over one gigabyte a second. The Surface did hit Thunderbolt speeds, but it couldn't maintain it and ended up taking two minutes and 32 seconds. The M2 MacBook Air, on the other hand, is flying right there at two gigabytes a second. And that took less than 59 seconds, more than twice as fast. I'm honestly surprised by these results. And that just shows that just because that's Thunderbolt doesn't mean that it is insanely fast. And for those of you guys that say that it might not be in best performance, I did switch to that because sometimes Windows laptops will slow down transfers if you don't have it. Both of these have 512 gigabyte SSDs. So let's go ahead and see what the SSD speeds look like. The write speed on the Surface is higher than on the MacBook, so we weren't limited for that Thunderbolt test, but the read speed's slightly faster on the Mac. The next test that I'm running is Speedometer 2.0 to check out snappiness for web browsing and web-based apps. And it looks like the MacBook is 75% faster in terms of things like Google Suite, uh, Microsoft Office Online, and that is a pretty big difference. Now, how about the performance for desktop apps? Well, I'm gonna run Geekbench 5 here, and the Surface Laptop 5 has uh, the latest 12th gen Alder Lake processor that has 10 cores, and it's designed for performance and efficiency. All right, guys, we have a result, and I am thoroughly impressed by the Surface. For single core, we only have a difference of 12%, and for multi-core, that is a difference of 17%. Now we'll see how it does in other tasks and plugged in later in the video. Now, what about the graphics for compute tasks, which so many apps nowadays use? Wow, guys, this is a huge difference. We have 30,000 compared to 13,500. The Mac is over twice as fast or has better performance. Now we'll see how this translates to real world apps that we'll be testing soon. But before for that, I wanna show you guys this amazing thing from our channel partner, Moft, which is not only a carry sleeve, for your Mac or your Surface, but it is also a stand because of its unique origami design. Now using its innovative two-in-one design, you can seamlessly transition from the laptop sleeve bag to a stand right away. And it has two built-in angles, 15 degrees and 25, so you can choose what works best for you. And not only does it hold your laptop, but it has this separate layer design. So you have this pouch section, which can store things like an SD card reader, chargers, little uh, memory cards, and even things like your AirPods. And the nice thing is when you're not using the pouch, it is completely flat, making for the slim design. Moff's laptop sleeve uses this durable PU material, and it is anti-scratch and anti-slip, so your laptop stays in place. Moff's Black Friday coupon will save you up to 60 bucks, and you can be the first to know about their flash sales by subscribing to their email. Go ahead and check it out using the link in the video description. And now, what about sustained performance. We know that the M2 MacBook Air is fanless and it doesn't even have a proper uh, heat block, whereas the Surface actually has an active cooling system. So I'm running a single run of Cinebench R25. We'll see what we get. And then after we'll do a long test. Halfway through our MacBook is already at 108 degrees Celsius. But what I'm really surprised about is that the Surface is still running silent. And look at that. The performance is a lot closer than I thought. We have a difference once again of 17%, just like in Geek bench. I'm really impressed how the surface is keeping up, but now let's run our 10 minute throttle test and see if the surface is going to be faster once the MacBook slows down. It's been five minutes and the MacBook already slowed down to 2.8 gigahertz down to 15 watts because it's hot, whereas the surface it's running around 82 degrees Celsius at full 25 watts and I can barely hear the fans. Using my thermal camera, the MacBook's at 47 degrees Celsius at the hottest spot compared to the surface, 49.50 right over there. Wow. 
that is very hot. There's also a lot more heat in general, but the surface is getting it away from that chip. Our scores are in and wow, Intel has done an incredible job. Uh, the MacBook still beat it, but by only 4%. And we know if this test was longer, the MacBook would slow down more than the Surface because it's maintaining full performance with very low temperatures. That is impressive. And now I want to get into some real world things that people do day to day. And I'm going to start out with the speakers and the webcams. Both of these have speakers that are hidden underneath the keyboard. So let's go ahead and take a listen. Now the Surface isn't terrible for a Windows laptop, but the MacBook gets louder, has better highs, and much more bass. Now as far as the webcams, the Surface supports Windows Hello, and I definitely prefer that over Touch ID because of how quick and easy it is to authenticate. Now the Surface camera only supports 720p compared to the M2 MacBook Airs, 1080p so you guys let me know which one looks better in terms of video quality and as far as microphones the surface has dual front facing microphones whereas the m2 macbook air does not so let me know which one sounds better down below now we also have some major display differences but i'm going to cover that in a bit first i want to look at graphics i'm going to run 3d marks wildlife extreme to test out the gaming performance we have our results and the macbook has over twice the fps 41.3 compared to 20.15 now of course windows has a lot more games but with mac os some developers are starting to take it more seriously like for example we have Resident Evil recently. Next let's do a quick 3D render test. For a long time Macs were said to be terrible for this but now with the M1 and M2 chips even thin and light MacBooks can start to render. The MacBook is done while we're still waiting for the Surface. This thing took under two minutes. Now that was using the GPU whereas a Surface it cannot, it has to use CPU. I don't know why, maybe CPU is just way faster anyways. So I'm gonna switch to the CPU and see how long it takes here while we're waiting for the Surface. The Surface is done and that took five minutes and basically eight seconds, more than two and a half times longer than the Mac. Now switching to CPU, this took four minutes and 42 seconds. So it pretty much is just slightly faster, but having the graphics is really helpful. And now let's see what happens with photo editing. I have Lightroom opened up here with these high resolution files. Now switching through, performance seems fairly similar. Let's try the sky selection here. Bam, the Mac is done. Surface is still waiting. I should have done a timer, probably about three times longer, wow. And now I'm gonna export these 50 raw images to JPEG. Now you guys saw the CPU performance is very close, both 16 gigs of RAM. Let's see how they do. Dang, the MacBook is flying compared to the Surface, even though some of those previous benchmarks show that they're close. Bam, the Surface is done and it took more than twice as long. So if you're a photo editor, the Mac is a no brainer. Now, what about video editing? I have DaVinci Resolve here with a 4K timeline, fairly easy footage with some effects. Both of them are playing back smoothly, but the Surface has to use more resources to do so. Let's try an effect now. I'm gonna stabilize this clip. The Mac is flying. It is going so fast. Oh my goodness, I, um, I missed the timer there by a second. The Mac took five and a half seconds compared to 12 and a half, and any sort of effects are gonna be way faster. Now let's go ahead and export this five minute project. Bam, and we are off. I know it's hard to see because of Windows scaling sucks, but we're at 28 frames per second compared to 82 or so on the Mac. The fanless Mac took a minute and 27 seconds while we're still waiting for the Surface. And the Surface is finally done taking four minutes and 42 seconds. That is over three times longer than the Mac. Now you guys see all the performance is way better on the MacBook. Uh, so if you care about that at all, well, you should have the Mac. But what about the other things? 
As far as the screens, both of them are very detailed, but the Surface has a three by two aspect ratio, which I actually prefer. Now in terms of screen brightness, the MacBook is slightly brighter, but what stands out more is when you're watching content, you have more contrast, especially for dark scenes, and we have a massive difference in reflectivity where the surface still looks like a mirror. They have not fixed it and that messes up your contrast. Uh, outside it's very hard, whereas the MacBook has great coatings. So as far as the display, the MacBooks is way, way better. You guys saw the crazy difference. The only way that the Surface is better other than the aspect ratio that I personally like is the fact that it is a touchscreen. Some people really dig that, but then you're gonna have so many fingerprints with that very reflective screen. Now, as far as the design differences, you guys can see that we have the Alcantara right here. I personally like it. I know Vadim doesn't like it, but you can get a full metal one if you want, just like the MacBook. Now, as far as the keyboard, the Surface has a great one. It feels awesome, just like the keyboard on the Mac, but the Mac trackpad is so much better, more responsive, it's magnetic, it is great, whereas the Surface one is just about average. The Surface used to be sleeker when it came out, but now the Mac has thinner bezels, it is actually lighter and thinner than the Surface, and the footprint is smaller as well. With that, we have two Thunderbolt ports that transfer much faster. We have MagSafe, whereas the Surface only has one of those ports, but it does give you a regular USB. And somehow, even though the MacBook is smaller and lighter, it has a slightly larger battery. And with that, let's go ahead and see the results of our battery life comparison throughout this video. We have been shooting for three and a half hours, running all of those tests, and Wait, our, just our surface just died. It was at 1% battery life no and it way. shut off. Let's see what our MacBook has. Now, I actually re-ran Blender with the CPU, which I didn't do here. So we were doing more stuff. I was looking stuff up and we have 46% battery life when the surface died. So guys, that's almost twice as good battery life and I actually did more tasks. So with all of that said, with these laptops being priced the same $1,700, who would buy the Surface? Well, it's a decent Windows laptop, but when you have a Mac for this same price, offering all the better performance, better speakers, better almost everything, it is just a no brainer as long as you don't need Windows natively. You can still use Parallels like we showed off in a different video uh, and you can still access certain things like that. But this is just showing why Apple is selling so many of these laptops. Even now they have some of them discounted which we'll link down below. It is an amazing machine. I'll still recommend the Surface to some people that need Windows, but for most, just get a Mac. Go ahead and click that circle above to subscribe. Check out one of those great videos right over there. Check out Moff's leave down below this one, Max, and I'll see you in the next video.